Hi, welcome to this tutorial, another in my series on friction. And what we've got here is a particle of mass 10 kilograms is resting on a rough horizontal plane. And we've got a force P of 25 newtons which acts on the particle at 30 degrees above the horizontal. And if the coefficient of friction is one fifth, the question is, will this particle move, and if so, with what acceleration? And this is a question you might like to try, so if you want to give it a go, just pause the video, have a go, come back when you're ready, and see if your solution agrees with my version. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, to do such a problem, I'd like to think that you've copied down this diagram and we need to add to it. We need to add in the other forces that are acting on this particle. Now you're going to have the weight which will act downwards so we'll just mark that in. The weight would be mg. We know the mass is 10 so it'd be 10 times acceleration due to gravity g which we're going to take as 9.8 in this question, 9.8 meters per second per second. Other forces? Well, the particle's in contact with a surface, so there must be a contact force, a normal reaction, which I'm going to call R, and that would be R Newtons. And because this is on a rough surface, and because we're pushing with this force of 25 Newtons, the particle is going to want to move towards the right. So that means there must be friction, and friction opposes motion, remember, so there must be a frictional force back in this direction. And I've got all my forces acting at a point because we're treating this as a particle. Now this frictional force I'm just going to call F, F for friction, and we'll put in those units Newtons. Now there's no other forces acting on this particle, so that's the forces done. Now, is this particle going to move? Well, it will only move if the force to the right, provided by P, is greater than the maximum friction, the maximum value that friction can be. And remember that that maximum value of friction is F equals mu R. Okay, mu being the coefficient of friction. We'll come back to that later, but what I want to do is to find out, first of all, what forward force to the right P provides in trying to push this to the right. So to do that, what we're going to look at is resolving. We're going to resolve to the right. And if we resolve to the right, then the component of P, let's just write this in, the component of P, Okay, trying to push this to the right is going to be 25 times the cosine of this angle, 30 degrees. 25 cos 30. Remember how to split a force into components. If you're unsure, just go on my website, look out on the tutorial on splitting a force in components from the main index. This force P, remember, has two components, one in this direction and one upwards. The one in this direction contains the angle, so it's going to be cosine. OK, work this out, 25 times cosine of 30 degrees, and what you should find you get is 21.650 and so on newtons. So that's the amount of force trying to push this particle to the right. But the question is, let's just divide this off, the question is, is this greater than the friction, the maximum value that friction can be? And to get that F max, we know that that's equal to mu R, but we need to work out what R is. And so what we can do is resolve upwards consider the resultant force upwards, which we know should be zero, because this particle doesn't move off the plane or go into the plane. 
it stays in relative equilibrium to the plane. So if we resolve upwards, let's start with R. What have we got? We've got all of R acts upwards. And then we've got part of this 25 Newton force acting upwards. Remember, this force P can be split into two components, one this direction and one upwards. And the one upwards doesn't contain the 30 degrees here. So it's going to be sine of that angle. And it's plus because it's in the positive sense that we've got here. Plus 25 sine of 30 degrees. What other forces have we got? We've got this 10g, the weight, acting downwards. All of it acts downwards in the opposite sense to our positive sense. That's going to be minus 10g. And as for the friction, well the friction's perpendicular at right angles to the direction we're resolving in. So there'll be no effect from the frictional force F here. So this is our resultant force acting on the particle. And what is that resultant force? Well we know it's equal to zero because it's not moving up or down. So to work this out all we've got to do is add 10g and subtract 25 sine 30 degrees from both sides. So therefore we end up with R equaling 10g minus 25 sine 30 degrees. And if you work that out on your calculator you get exactly 85.5 and don't forget those units, newtons. Now that we've got the reaction, the contact force from the surface, we can work out what the frictional force is. So therefore the maximum frictional force, F max will say, is going to be equal to mu times the normal reaction. And we know that mu from up here, the coefficient of friction was one fifth. So we've got one fifth times R and R was 85.5. Work that out and you get exactly 17.1. And again, don't forget those units, newtons. So what's this telling us? Well, friction, as we know, builds up and up and up as we gradually push with this 25 newtons. It builds up and up and up. And it cannot go further than 17.1 newtons. But we've got a forward force of 21.650 newtons provided by the component of P. Part of P then, this part pushing forward is 21.650 newtons and this is greater than what the maximum value of friction would be, 17.1 newtons. So clearly it's going to move. So if we just summarize we can say that therefore since, okay, since that forward force of 21.650 and so on newtons is greater than the 17.1 newtons, we can see that the particle moves. So that means we've answered the first question. It moves. So if it's going to move, because we've got a resultant force now um, of whatever 21.650 minus 17.1 newtons is, we've got a resultant force forward, it's going to accelerate. And so to find that acceleration, let's just put that arrow in here, our acceleration arrow. And we'll call it A, A meters per second per second. So how are we going to find that acceleration? Well, we apply Newton's second law of motion. That's F equals MA to the particle in the horizontal direction to the right. So we resolve to the right. So what is our resultant force to the right? Well we know that P provides 21.650 newtons to the right. So let's just write that in. 21.650 and so on newtons. Okay. Then we've got minus the frictional force which was 17.1 newtons. And that's our resultant force acting on the particle towards the right. And that resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. 
Newton's second law. The mass was 10 kilograms. The acceleration, A, is what we're trying to find. So, if we subtract 17.1 from 21.650, what we get is essentially 4.550 and so on equals 10A. Divide both sides by 10 and you end up with A equals 0 0.4550 and so on. And if we give this, say, to two decimal places, then therefore the acceleration is going to be 0 0.46. And don't forget those units, meters per second per second, and to put in that degree of accuracy, two de decimal places, 2 dp. OK, well, I hope that gives you some idea of how to tackle problems like this. And that brings us to the end of this example.